Good evening, I'm Sarah Sapsanama. Let's begin with the headlines of the hour. Medical Education Investigation Commission report unveiled recommending action against 42, including Lokman Singh Kargi and Tirtha Khania. Provincial politics in tatters due to political parties, 32 chief ministers appointed in less than seven years. Koshi's assembly session called for 18th of April. U.S. President Joe Biden says he believes Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is making a mistake in his handling of the war in Gaza, urges Israel to agree to a six to eight week ceasefire. And Koshi leads in badminton under the Inter-Province Sports Tournament. Gandaki and Karnali enter into the semi-final of men's cricket. Minister for Education Sumana Sresta has published the report prepared by the Commission led by former Chair of Special Court Gauri Bahadur Karki on the irregularities in medical education sector. The report revealed after six years has a few names and recommended for actions against them. The investigation report has highlighted problems in and given solutions as well on the irregularities in the sector, affiliations issued, entrance exams, admissions, fee structure and the quality of education. The report has suggested for actions against 42 individuals, including immediately sacking Vice-Chancellor of Triban University, Tirtha Khania, along with Rector Sudha Tripathi and Registrar Dili Upriti. Others in the list of actions were Vice-Chancellor Hira Bahadur Maharjan, along with Dharan BP Koirala Health Academy's Vice-Chancellor and also a warning against Kathmandu University's the then Vice-Chancellor Ram Kanta Makaju. The report had been kept under shadows as high-ranking university officials had been alleged of irregularities. The report had also suggested for actions against several medical colleges and recommended to limit the fees for medical education at 3.5 million rupees. The report also revealed involvement of former Chief of Commission for the Investigation of Abusive Authority, Lokman Singh Kargi, and had suggested against appointing him to any constitutional position. Minister for Education Sumana Shrestha has expressed commitment at taking action against those found guilty after the investigation. The Supreme Court has issued an interim order directing newly appointed Gandaki Chief Minister Khagaraz Adhikari not to, take, not to take decisions that would have a long-term impact. Hearing on the writ filed by Nepali Congress Parliamentary Party leader Surinder Raj Pandey, single bench of Supreme Court Justice Binod Sharma issued the interim order directing newly appointed Gandaki Chief Minister not to take decisions with long-term impacts. With the need to address the dispute of legitimacy at the earliest, the Supreme Court has also set the hearing for 22nd of April. Nepali Congress Parliamentary Party leader and former Chief Minister Surendra Pandey had moved the Supreme Court, terming the government led by Chief Minister Khagaraz Adhikari unconstitutional. The writ mentioned that Chief Minister Adhikari had sought the unconstitutional support of the Speaker to generate a majority and had therefore demanded not allowing Adhikari to operate at the chief, as the Chief Minister. The writ application noted that the Speaker was a role, neutral role and therefore could not support any party to generate a majority vote at the Provincial Assembly. Koshi Province Governor Parshuram Kapung has called the session of Koshi Province Assembly for 1 p.m. on April 18th, that is Thursday. Governor Kapung has called the session as provisioned by the Article 183, Sub-Article 3 of the Constitution of Nepal, 2015. According to the issue, notice issued by spokesperson of the Office of the Province Governor, the Province Assembly session has been called on the basis of written request of the more than one-fourth members of Koshi Province Assembly on 8th of April. On Monday, 39 Province Assembly members of CPN UMO and 13 of CPN Maui Centre had submitted an application to the Province Governor informing about the withdrawal of support extended to Chief Minister Kedar Karki and requesting to call the Assembly session. On the same day, the Province Government had recommended the Province Governor to call the fifth session of Provincial Assembly on 24th of May. Kedar Karki was appointed the Chief Minister of Koshi Province with the support of 39 Provincial Assembly members of CPN UML on 13th of October. UML had exited the government after Chief Minister Karki had included CPN Maui Centre and CPN Unified Socialists in the Council of Ministers on 3rd of October. 
impact of the change in central political equation is now being seen in the province as well. The 93-member province assembly has 40 members from CPN UMO, 29 of Nepali Congress, 13 of CPN Maui Center, 6 of Rashtriya Prasadantra Party, including the Speaker, 4 of CPN Unified Socialist, and 1 Provincial Assembly Member Independent. Newly appointed Chief Minister of Kardali Province, Yamalal Kadir, has taken the oath of office and secrecy, but without forming cabinet, as the ruling alliance partners have yet to finalize their power equation. Kadil has expressed commitment for the province's development and prosperity and has said the Council of Ministers will take time to gain full shape. Maui Center has said it will not participate in the provincial government until the power equation is satisfactory. It has been claiming for the Ministry of Financial Affairs and Planning, Social Development, Physical Infrastructure Development and Industry, Tourism, Forest and Environment Ministry. Federal Parliament is where laws are formulated and issues of national concerns are discussed. The Parliament plays a significant part in formulating the Constitution, ensuring its amendment and determining the roadmap of the nation. However, with the Parliament abuse for political interest, issues of public remain compromised. Continuous obstruction of the Parliament also increases the risk of public animosity towards the system. However, the members of the lower house have not appeared serious towards this issue. Their role at the parliament has also appeared feeble because of prioritizing the interests of their political parties. Despite a sound system in place, lawmakers themselves have said the failure in ensuring proper implementation has resulted in increasing public frustrations. Many lawmakers have also called for discussions among the ruling and opposition parties to put an end to the house stalemate. Instead of holding discussions to reach a consensus for lifting obstructions to resume parliamentary proceedings, the government seems to be running away from this significant responsibility. Such lapses can raise serious questions on parliamentary practice. It is now time for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. But before today's question, let's take a look at the results from yesterday's poll. Yesterday we asked you why has Chief Minister of Boshi Province not yielded despite knowing that he lacks majority support. 51% voted for option A, lack of morality, 15% for B, lost for power and 34% for C, interpreting the constitution as per his interest. And here's today's question. What do you term the protest of political parties holding the parliament hostage? Your options are A, risk of weakening mechanism, B, ignoring issues of public concern, and C, parliamentary practice. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Now, in our public voice segment, today we've asked industrialists gathered in the capital for the General Assembly what should be done to raise investment. Let's take a look at what they had to say. परिवर्तन ऑयल को परिस्थिति में परिवर्तित हुआ है जाने पर चल उद्योग कृषि लगाए विभिन्न सेक्टर में जैसे युवा लाजे अगाड़ी बढ़ाया न बनी यो और तंत्र जैसे अब जो उन्हें अवस्था सही न उपभोक्ता सही न खाने मांचे सही न लाउने मांचे सही न इंडिया मांचे सही न देश लेकर दाखिली अब जैसे योड़ा हमें लेबनी के सरकार रहा हमें लेबनी के घर में अब हमें ले उत्पादन में जोड़ दियो सूरजगार ये निर्माण करूं गौर ने लाये अपने मुल्क में अपनी देरी को रहा रुचन तो अब तेज लाइसेंस है सहजी करने गौर दिनों पर ये उटा सरकार ले पनी इतिहास रूप परिवर्तन रहा हमें लेजेंड हार्स कोर में राज्य एक आपस में अगाड़ी बढ़े रहे इसको चाहे सुरक्षित कर रहे रहे अगाड़ी बढ़ना सके बने इसको चाहे समस्या निराकरण करने चाहे सरकार के भूमिका रहन चाहे और तो मुझे जो लेजुन बात है जुनून सार दिन बात है तेज में अपने हमी न्यूज़ चैनल मेरे लक्ष्य में जो जावा न्यूज़ चैनल तेज में व्यसन तेज पोषी उस 
यहाँ नहीं उत्पादन कर रहे निर्यात करने सकने चीज को चाहिए यहाँ व्यवस्थापन करने पर नहीं होना आर्थिक नीति चाहिए राम रूप भाव बनी अमी निजी क्षेत्र ले काम करने साथ ताऊ नहीं हो देश भीतर नहीं बढ़ दो रोजगारी को वृद्धि होने पर यो Now on to international update, U.S. President Joe Biden has said he believes Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is making a mistake in his handling of the war in Gaza. In an interview, Biden urged Israel to agree to a six to eight week ceasefire in its war against Hamas to allow total access of food and medicine into the enclave. International pressure is growing for a ceasefire to be agreed as talks continue in Cairo. The latest round has included the head of the CIA as well. Netanyahu says he has a set a date for military offensive in the southern city of Rafah, where about 1.5 million Palestinians are sheltering. Meanwhile, Eid al-Fitr, the end of Ramadan, has begun. One man sheltering in Rafah tells his family are marking the day without the basic necessities of life. The head of the UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees has reiterated warnings of possible famine, saying far too little aid is reaching Gaza. Philippe Lazzarini also warns of the threat of unexploded munitions as Palestinians return to the devastated city of Khan Yunis after Israel withdrew its troops. Meanwhile, in the latest strike by Israel, the family members of Hamas leader Ismail Haniye have been killed. This includes three of his sons and three grandchildren. Hamas, meanwhile, has said the deaths will not affect ceasefire demands. Welcome back. It's time now for Sports Update. Sports News. Koshi Province leads the medal tally in the ongoing inter-province national sports tournament badminton competition with four gold medals. In the match held in Bharatpur's covered hall today, Koshi won four of the seven events final. Koshi's Seema Rajbansi won in the women's singles and Vishal Tamang and Seema herself won the mixed doubles. Koshi also won the men's and women's team event. Towards men's double, Gandaki's Bishal Kharka and Sujan Thapa won gold and in the women's double, Gandaki's Dilasha Rana and Tilmaya Rana won gold. The only goal for Bagmati province went to Raju Garanja in men's singles. He defeated Gandaki's Sujan Thapa in the final. The winners were all awarded today itself. Likewise, in the volleyball competition held in guest house ground, Koshi, Karnali, Sudurpashim and Gandaki entered into the semi-final. Lumbini and Gandaki are up against in the first semi-final and Bagmati and Karnali in the second in the women's category. Both the matches have been scheduled for tomorrow morning. Semi-final matches in the boxing tournament were also held today with the final slated for tomorrow. Koshi province also entered into the final of women's football, defeating Madhesh province by 2-0. The second semi-final of women's football has been scheduled for tomorrow between Karnali and Sudur Pashim. Half centuries from Deepak Dumre and Arjun Kumal helped Gandaki province advance to the semi-final round of the men's cricket tournament under the first inter-province national games. Gandaki secured a 32-run win over Bagmati to move to the last four. In the match played at model ground of Gautam Buddha International Cricket Stadium in Bharatpur Chitwan, Gandaki were put to bat first, where they posted a massive total of 234 runs for the loss of six wickets in 20 overs. Arjun and Deepak added 101 runs for the second wicket partnership. Deepak top scored with a quick fire 75 from 31 balls. His innings included eight sixes and he hit the fence four times. Arjun added 55, Sandeep Khatri scored 27, and Karan Pangeni contributed 24. Rijan Dhakal and Krijan Gurung picked two wickets each for Bagmati, while Deepesh Shrestha and Sonu Devkota shared a wicket apiece. In reply, Bagmati were restricted to 202 runs for the loss of seven wickets in 20 overs. Robin Josi remained unbeaten at 68 for Bagmati, but his contribution was inadequate for his team. Trivan Army have lifted the men's category of the second valley-wide wheelchair basketball tournament, while Jalakil Wheelchair Sports Club have won the women's category. In the tournament organized by Nepal's Spinal Cord Injury Sports Association, Army saw of APF in the Department of Derby final of the men's category, while JWSC saw of Spinal Cord Injury Network Nepal in the women's category. Army saw of APF 21 for 17, while JWSC secured a 18 for 7 win over SCINN. Both winning teams walked away with a cash prize of 50,000 rupees each. 
Ami's Ram Bahadur Tamang was adjudged the most valuable player in the men's category, while the award went to JWSC's Rajani Rai in the women's category. Ramesh Khatri of Ami was the highest scorer in the men's category, while Tula Samagar was the top scorer in the women's category. All four players received 2,500 rupees each. That is all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.